All right, final round here. We're going to keep this hand. We've got some expensive stuff, a lot of expensive stuff, but we already have both colors and a one and a two drop, so it's certainly justifiable, especially on the draw. All right, I forgot that was in our deck. Okay. So we're going to play the Reaver. We actually got a bit of our little vampire combo coming up here. Ooh, Ingenious Scab. There's a strong card. Didn't attack with the Fogwalker. That's a bit surprising. All right. Getting a little mana hosed here, but we're still making plays, which is good. Awkward draw only because we need the double black for the condemned. All right. Um, hmm. I think we actually block with the Aristocrat on the Fogwalker and then sacrifice the Graph Rats to boost our dudes. The main reason I'm doing that is if I get the fifth man and play the Scavenger, I'll get the Barats back. Like, it'll take longer to flip them, but I don't mind boosting my Vampires anyway. Ah, Geese and Garolf. There's a strong card. Dread Knight in the Yard. Well, at least they can't bring that back. Okay, so I got the fifth land. I've got some options now. I can do the Scavenger to bring back the Rats. I can do the Disposal to deal with this. As well as this. No zombie creatures to bring back from Yard. Currently. Um, let's do the scavengers. Although then he can attack. Well, I'm not in a great position to use Ruthless Disposal right now anyway. I don't want to really sacrifice either of my creatures. So I can double block the Geese and Garolf with Aristocrat and Reaver. It's certainly dangerous if he has a bounce effect, but I think we'll just take it. There's a good draw. So Yeah, 
He's got four mana up. It feels as though he's going to probably do something. I think it might be in my best interest to just collective defiance. I can do both. I can do collective defiance plus graph rats. Forego the three damage to my opponent, which isn't bad. Makes the best use of mana. I feel as though he probably... We'll see if he has a way to deal with this. There's a pretty good chance that we're just going to... So I can swing with... What could he crack back for? Four, six, eight... 11, 12. Yeah, it might be in my best interest to just swing with everything. All right, he did have a bounce effect, unfortunately. So I guess we'll discard. Hmm. I guess the spreading flames. We're going to be able to get the Aristocrat back with the Midnight Scavenger, so it's not like all is lost here. So we'll kill the rats. And we'll still going to Defiance and take care of the Gisa and Geralt here. And then we'll pass. So I do have some options next turn. If I draw a land especially, I can do Scavenger plus Aristocrat, which doesn't seem terrible. I can also Disposal, deal with big threats now, set up for later or, or better threats. It might actually be a good idea. Just kind of ensures we don't get uh, tempoed out here. Although maybe if he's just pumping, he doesn't have a play. I don't know. Elite. All right, well, that answers that. All right. So what are the things I need to kill? Obviously the Elite. Can I afford to play Newsgrav Mob? I I don't think I can. Maybe I can, though. If he plays any spell to kill it, we at least get a, a zombie. But I don't know what I'm going to do about the Liliana's Elite. So if I Ruthless Disposal, though, and I take care of, say, these two, I'm still taking three going to eight, and then I don't have a way to deal with this. So I might actually need to cast New Scrab Mob, but then, like I said, I still have to chump the Liliana's Elite, which doesn't seem great. I guess we have to do the Disposal. Um, maybe I needed to not play the land there, but then I couldn't play the mob, so that doesn't exactly make sense. I probably have to discard the Stromkirk Condemned. Okay. So we'll take care of the Elite... Um, maybe I do actually let him keep the scav, and we, we probably have to take care of the flyer. Because we have all the the ground guys. And what did I... I'll say uh, discard the condemned. So we're leaving him with a ground attacker and a skulker, because 
ultimately I think that's going to be better for us. Okay, unfortunately that's just a really big problem that I'm not going to be able to deal with at the moment. So if I play the mob, he can sing with these two. I take five, and then I immediately have to find an answer. I think I'm left with no choice, really. Opponent crushed us pretty hard this game. I don't even think... I can draw a certain death. Okay, so I have to draw a certain death next turn or I die. So we do have an out, but... Uh, not a great one. I mean, my other option was Scavenger Graph Rats. Too bad it doesn't give him haste as well as menace, but that's asking too much. That would be cool. Pair these two together, spit out zombies, give him haste, buff him, give him menace. That'd be an actual way to win this. But we have to draw a certain death, or I think we lose. I don't know if we have any other draw. Oh, wow, he's even attacking with the scab. That's extremely intimidating. So here's a clear example of why New Scrab Mob is not 6 mana for 10 power as some commenters suggested it was. It's an actual precise example of how it's not that. Uh, I guess we die, so we don't need to show them any more cards. That was pretty brutal. So, got annihilated by blue-black. Uh, still don't have a sideboard, so I guess we're going to run it back. I can do shamble back, actually. That could be useful here. Turns off Geese and Geralt a little bit. Yeah, I guess. I don't have a ton of things I'd like to cut for it, but... Maybe I can cut, like, a Reaver. Okay. Um, this hand is pretty awful. This is exactly why high curve decks are, are really bad and why I tend to drift away from them as often as possible. You end up with situations like this. This is also an example, once again, why Spreading Flames is really not that great of a card. Um, I almost think this is a mulligan, as depressing as that is. I just, I'm not going to realistically be able to play these spells for a millennia, so I think we have to mulligan. This hand is obviously a mulligan too, which is really disappointing, but the way it has to be. Okay, so we'll keep this one and we'll bottom that.
So if I attack with the garrison, he double blocks the garrison, takes two. We'll kill the graph rats, I guess. So he doesn't draw. All right. Yeah, it's kind of hoping he played around a trick there, but he wisely did not. Okay, so I can do Collective Defiance. It's really not that great for us here. So I think we're probably just going to... Well... Yeah, I guess we set up for it. Let's... Because uh, he's a man away from the Scavenger, I guess we'll shamble back first. It's not the best use of mana, admittedly. But I think it's a play I'm okay with right now. So we're saving the Defiance for something that's more difficult to deal with. Um, all right, we'll do the... I can actually do Defiance and make him discard his hand as well, but I think that actually helps him because he's got... Uh, Beneficial effects. The reason I'm slam dunking my lands here is because we have so many five drops in our deck. I mean, a play I could have done is Collective Defiance. I think this is better. We might have to Collective Defiance soon here, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't think using the hand discard effect is necessarily what we want to do against our opponent, like I said. There might be some incentive to do it. Like if I defiance this now and swing with everything, he blocks the Blood Mad Vampire. I think it just seems likely he's got something. We're going to go Supplicant. We're going to go for the long-term plan here. Save the defiance for something spicier I mean we can swing with blood mad plus I, I think it's just not quite worth it six mana up seems unlikely to me that he's got nothing although it is possible okay so I can attack with the blood mad and the yeah, I think we swing with these three. I guess I can swing with the humans, too. If he blocks them both, he would take two, four, eight. I don't think the one ones are going to do a lot here anyway. So I've got enough six drops where I probably don't need to uh, discard anything here. 
Okay, so we got to draw a card. I can go on the supplicant plan. I've got three six drops that I would like to be able to play. So I guess we'll pass. I maybe wanted to sandbag that in case he has a zombie plus compelling deterrence. We're going to lose our... Well, we just lose... No, I guess if he did it to a token, we'd lose our defiance. Okay. So, didn't get a zombie in the yard, which is nice. And we have the defiance for that, which is also nice. So, probably just going to do that. It's also ruthless disposal, but... I think we'll just do two modes. I mean, since they haven't made any plays, it it kind of strikes me that they don't have great action in their hand. Maybe I'm wrong about that. We'll find out. Does it fizzle our spell, too? No, it doesn't. Okay. So the good news is we can still deal with that. And even if we had done the third mode, our opponent still would have been able to play the Drownyard Behemoth. So I think ultimately it's it's fine. We're going to take this, because I want to sack my human instead of chump with it. To the ruthless disposal, I mean. Contingency plan, okay. It's kind of unexpected. I've seen this card come up more often than I expected. So we have I think we just want him to tap out and play like a Markov Dread Knight. Just maximize our ruthless disposal value. We're gonna have to well, I guess the problem is if we Well, we we pretty much have to discard whatever we, we draw, but we'll see if that's a a huge issue or not. Alright, thankfully it's not a big issue at all, so let's deal with these two. So we'll sack the human and discard the land. And we're going to swing team here. Okay. Flame Blade Angel seems pretty good. 
We know he has Throttle in his deck, but if he has Throttle, he can deal with the Supplicant. Is it better to go for the Angel here? Probably. We're certainly not in a huge rush to win. Let's uh, just go to post-combat, see if he does anything. No? All right. We'll go for the... I mean, the thing is, like I said, if he has Throttle, we're in a bit of trouble. If I play the Angel, it opens him up for more removal and it sets me back a turn. Hmm, this is one of those cases where I don't know what the priority is. Playing this Flame Blade Angel seems really good. It's a must deal with. But I can kill him when I untap otherwise. I think I'm going to play the bomb. Well, all right. Wasn't anticipating the uh, the combat trick. Or the uh, counter spell, excuse me. Oh, so he had both. He had everything. He had everything he could ask for. I was I was wondering what was better and he just he can he just has everything. He just has counter spell removal removal. So okay. Obviously not good for us. And then we draw land, as expected. I guess he did contingency plan. Did he put anything in his graveyard? I can't even remember now. I feel like he didn't put anything in his graveyard. So he probably, he just had a bunch of good cards on top of his deck. So what could I rip that would possibly get me back here? I guess, well, certainly not that. So spreading flames, certain death would have killed him there. We're losing against the multiple contingency plan deck, which is not feeling so hot, not feeling good about that. Mm-hmm. So need to rip something or we're dead. Spreading flames, which if it had been a turn ago, we would have won. Now it's not. Hmm. Yeah, we're, we're unfortunately dead here. All right, I guess the one way to do this is attack with zombie, hope he blocks with Dusk Feaster, and then we kill Feaster plus Thraben Foulbloods. That's the only way this goes down. All right, unfortunately, he did not block the way we needed him to, so we lose pretty badly here. All right. All in all, pretty unsuccessful draft. Um, I, like I said, I, I stray away from decks like this quite often, as often as possible, just because any sort of deck with a high curve, I've, I've just found to you encounter all sorts of additional problems on top of your ordinary uh, draft problems. So I think it ended up costing us. Uh, and <laughs> the funny thing is I was asking for bombs, which we did get this time, but bombs with a good mana curve are really... The requirements I need so that was that was pretty bad we did not uh, find success with this deck uh, but that's all right still learning lessons in the format so obviously a lot more lessons necessary to be learned so I can be more successful thanks for tuning in folks we'll see you soon